Good evening. I'm Father Russ Carmichael, and of course, this is Street Talk. I want to thank all my viewers for tuning in again tonight. Uh, I want to uh, I want to say hello to uh, uh, Darren and Bobby, who I know are watching uh, at ho at home. And uh, Darren's doing very good. Got his new TV tonight, uh, today. So we're very happy with that. I also, as we has opened up most of our shows. I want to say we, our community has got all our prayers for Andy Maynard and his uh, recovery, and we're, we're praying that Andy's coming along fine. Uh, with that, Ray, I know you're out there, so go easy. Okay, hello, and everything else. You know, we're good, good to know that you're watching. Also tonight, I've got a great guest on tonight, who I haven't seen for a while. Uh, okay, we have Representative Betsy Ritter with me tonight, and of course I have my co-host across the table uh, with me, Mr. Cotton, very, very, who's sitting there, and uh, uh, we, sh we should have a uh, real good night tonight, uh, and any of you who want to call in, give me about 20 minutes and yeah, you know, and uh, and you can call in. And Betsy will answer your questions. Uh, but uh, we promise to. Uh, we'll, we got her in the hot seat. I, I, I got her here, so uh, we can beat up on her. <laughs> and now, after she beat uh, me and Bill and us on the <laughs> in the primary, Betsy, bless you. Thank you very uh, so, much. So so good. For it that was warm welcome. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> it was it was it was a it was a great primary. We had a lot of fun, and it was absolutely wonderful that you won. And you. Uh, and uh, obviously, Bill Bill sent his regards, and you know, as oh. you said, you had. Had breakfast you with had him breakfast yesterday. Yes, with I did. Him. He, and and he I said, send my regards yeah. also to <laughs> and, he said, and his family. Yeah, he said, make sure that you, you know, you make sure that all our voters get out and vote for Betsy. And I said, of course they will. Dominic, good to see you. As, as we say, back to party unity over here. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're nice to have you back on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Always good to see all, you, all, all, always, all, always, always very good. And uh, uh, again, it's... Uh, it, it's really good. Uh, one of the f things that we struggle with, and you are so helpful, I want to get right into, is uh, the people I said hello to are disabled. Okay, one of whom we care for under 24-7 care, uh, Darren, and uh, was the ABI, the brain injury yes. stuff, which we really, yes. we really did struggle hard on that we one. We did struggle hard uh -huh. uh, and long. And long, Actually, huh? it was, um, and I will say, in, for many people around the table, I believe, and I certainly heard these comments, it was um, an experience well worth the struggle on a couple of points. Um, I think the advocacy mm -hmm. uh, and it was uh, outstanding on the parts of the ind individuals um, affected and particularly passionate about not just their own circumstances, but mm -hmm. others in similar circumstances. Exactly right. And that was um, impressive, yeah. and I think uh, made a very compelling uh, day and a very compelling um, issue for people to really put a lot of work and thought into. And that was, I believe, very successful um, for the entire community. I think so, too. I think it was a real struggle. It was good for uh, the brain injury people. A lot of people didn't understand that issue. That and very, every, very passionate, very... Uh, but we found common ground, which is uh, what we were looking for and everything else like that. But a, a very difficult and... Uh, uh, emotional uh, issue, uh, okay, because so many of us have family members that are Correct. in that situation. Correct. And, uh, you, you know, and Dominic, of course, did uh, wonderful work in that, you well, know. I think everybody, everybody has a lot of empathy. I mean, obviously, if you've been in this situation or if you've worked with this, um, you know, we all understand where we've, we, what we've been through and uh, realize that this is a situation that can happen to anyone. It's, it's, it's not something that's genetic. That's right. Just like it's, that. It, it, and, and it can, and it, and it can come from any number of circumstances. And um, I think that's what brings really uh, the human element or, or, or brings people together around this issue is, is they do realize that this can happen to anybody. And, you, and you've seen people that this has happened to in their lives and uh, on, on multiple levels. I think that absolutely, and that um, realization, that knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, was something that it was um, 
rewarding to share in as a group in understanding that at I think a much higher level. As I, th I think that was really key, and and I and I think like working with you. Of course, I've known you for a lot of years since here and everything. But working over those emotional issues, family oh, issues, yeah. that struggling brought a lot of people together tighter. Everybody was trying to do the right thing, understanding the total disability community while people were trying trying to fight for certain little things and everything else like that but it it, it was uh and and mm -hmm. we thank you that you were there and oh. that you were up there uh, okay from an advocacy standpoint we needed ears like yours open hearts mm -hmm. family members that understood the difficulty and the emotionalism that surrounded that whole issue very tough oh thank you we say all the time there are phrases that you hear all the time and a phrase that we often folks use um, maybe at the conclusion of contentious issues sure. and we'll acknowledge that everybody in the room really is working towards the same end but in this case that was I felt particularly true yeah, right. uh, particularly applicable much more than a, a sort of a common phrase and um, I think in that respect it was a, a huge uh, positive step forward um, for the brain injury community definitely I know that we're going to be continuing to look at this okay. and the particular work that we did has resulted in an ongoing process and I know that's something that you've been doing well. most recently <laughs> and I want to thank you Dominic <laughs> but we need to do that and I want to thank you for that because yeah, yeah. it's not something that quick fix, okay, move oh, no, on. No, oh, no, 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 no. This is, we'll this is long term. That. This is, yeah. and for Dominic and I, it's lifetime. It's not even, not That's only right. do I have it in the family, but our business is caring for those who have, have the difficulty of brain injury and other disabled, but, you, you know, and, and it, it really is. It's lifetime for us. And, and uh, so, you know, we're totally involved. What it did for me, though, because, you know, I'm the radical Democrat, far left, crazy person, it did bring me across the aisle to individuals I mm -hmm. otherwise would not have dealt with. And that was, uh, that yeah. was for me, a very... Uh, uh, very nice, uh, okay, mm -hmm. with with uh, others of the uh, other party than yours and mine mm -hmm. that I would not otherwise have dealt with. Mm -hmm. But because of that issue, and because of the uh, you know brought us uh, brought us together. Which, well, and which I would is, submit mm -hmm. that the level of advocacy, um, of intelligent advocacy that was brought to the issue, really served that served that well, and uh, so we'll. You need to understand that it was <laughs> your work that helped that happen. Well, I, 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 let, I, I let Dominic. Dominic's right, my front guy on that stuff. He did. He did. I have. I do. I have. He to just say, tells me I go yeah, into savant yeah. mode whenever he sticks me in a meeting. So the brain flips on, and uh, I'll start spewing all the numbers. His, uh, his, 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 ba his background in that is, 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 uh, is really. He, he could articulate it far, far more than. Uh, uh, I, I could have, and, and his in-depth knowledge of that was really resourceful in that, you know. We've both been in it for years and years. I mean, I've mm -hmm. been through ADA and everything. But Dominic had the ability to bring uh, forward the uh, the key issues that human services needed to hear mm -hmm. from our oh, perspective. Yes. And, and, and the frustrations. And was, oh, oh, yeah, yeah very. The frustrations. Oh, oh, it was, it, and it was left an enormous impression Yeah, yeah, he on did. People. And I, I give thanks that he's here and he, he's with well, me. Well, I know, I know you, were, you were holding the gavel when they were actually <laughs> discussing this bill when it was on the House floor. <laughs> yes, I was. You get to watch <laughs> yes, CTN for everything, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. That's so right. yes, uh, there were there were quite a, it made an impression on a, on a wide variety of people, and uh, and you know we were glad to be able to um, obviously bring this up as a, as an issue. I, I think uh, when this program started some fifteen years ago, I think it, it was on the forefront of legislators' minds. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly mm -hmm. um, with lawsuits that we're we're dealing with with the state uh, back then yep. uh, over a long period of time, and I think. It kind of went underground for a long period of time because everybody thought that everything was going okay, and we had the waiver, and the waiver yeah. could work, right. and it did work, and did. and 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 that was and that was our that was our issue was was really uh, uh, many of us you know um, dealt with DSS and silence because uh, individually we didn't 
have a coming together to understand that we were all facing some of the same problems with them. And um, I think when they, they introduced such large changes the first time through, it kind of threw everybody. It was scary. Well, you know what? It was scary, but it, was, it also brought everybody together. And they said, you know what? We're all in the same boat. We have nothing to lose. They want, mm -hmm. they want to change everything around. Mm -hmm. And when you back somebody into a corner and they have nothing to lose, mm -hmm. that's where you know people come out and they're ready to fight. For me as a yeah. voter, though, for me as a voter and knowing you and everything else, that's why I need you in the Senate. <laughs> yes. Okay, because of your caring and everything else like that. That's uh, I guess I want to make sure that my viewers and my voters understand. We need voices like you there. We need people who understand that issue because those are one of the areas that everybody's trying to take money from. That's okay, right. and yeah. that's one of the weak areas that uh, disability people don't have the voice. Uh, okay, unless you have somebody like yourself that's in the seat that can uh, you know that can be an advocate and hear what we're saying and, mm -hmm. and that's why I need you to go back there <laughs> and we want to make sure you yeah. go back there uh, okay and it's really uh, again it's really nice to, uh, that you're sitting here that, uh, that you know I, I'm, I'm looking at the next time I see you well maybe not maybe at least the, maybe the third time I'd like to have you back before the actual day that I'm going to be able to say Mrs. Senator, okay. <laughs> that, yes. that's, that's what, uh, you know, that's what we're about and that's what we want to see happen, okay? And, and that's a primary major issue for us, okay? The disability issue is a major, major issue for us. So our second issue, of course, right, is even again, I'm involved in all the emotional issues, is the juvenile or the justice system oh, yes. problems, which you know. I know. Oh, my God. I can't get into any easy issues, you know. No, <laughs> you don't. You like large issues, don't you? I know. Next time, maybe you need to seek a simple one. Simple one. you got to find something that's easy, right? right? Well, you know that, of course, most of the issues that can be addressed with a simple solution have already been addressed, and so we're pretty much kind of down to the complicated stuff. Yeah, but that definitely is a myriad um, of complications. Serious and problems, and, and we've got to, uh, of course, the juvenile sentence bill I've been on since the beginning. Of course, I know about the lawsuits and everything mm -hmm. else. And, and for a lot of our viewers that don't understand, we have a federal lawsuit and a decision that says to do one thing, and our state is doing something else at the present time, and we're trying to figure out how we're going to... Not just Connecticut. Oh, uh, when, this, when the United States yeah. Supreme Court first came, yeah. came with their ruling, right. and um, it, it, essentially that there had to be a meaningful ability for juvenile offenders um, it, as they proceeded through, through sentencing, they and could not be sentenced to a life, life imprisonment anymore. without right. no. some form of potential intervention. Right. Uh, and uh, it didn't stipulate what had to happen at that no, intervention, no, only no, that there be opportunities, opportunities as they review. became adults right. for review exactly. and uh, to potentially address the length of their sentence. Um, and that really, I, it's my, I believe, and you can undoubtedly correct me on this, I don't believe any state uh, was in total um, conf conformed completely no, to that no, Supreme Court opinion, fact, most, am I right? No, I don't think anyone in the whole, the whole country conformed to that, no. And the difficulty is all of them, different stages, are uh, trying to conform to that, trying to figure out how they're going to address it. Because, and, and the mistaken impression is that, gee whiz, at a certain point you're letting them out, and that is not the case. No. The decision does not say that. The decision says you have to, basically, we're looking at a review to see where you are, and, and the reason for that is the scientific evidence that right. shows the brain changes. With that comes tremendous complications because a lot of people don't understand the science behind that and the reason well, I mean, we're lucky is because... I, I, I know I, I, we, we laugh at this actually. Father, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he first attended one of my trainings that I did uh, for the state mm -hmm. uh, when I used to uh, do them for yeah, Allied. Yeah, uh, years ago, right. For, for getting people involved in, in brain injury, sort of like an orientation, right. so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, but part of what I put out there uh, to people when I describe what happens when you have a frontal lobe injury, injury and, I, and I take it back and I'm like, well, do you remember what it was like when you were like a teenager? <laughs> you're, 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 no, I know. <laughs> what, you know, for, for, for the boys, 
Yeah. They think they're Superman. Oh, yeah. They think that nothing's Immortal. nothing's bad. Yeah, We're all immortal. yeah, right. Uh -huh. That nothing uh -huh. bad's going to happen to them. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. you you think about like your first relationships that you have. You know, this person's leaving me. Oh, my life's yep. never Life going to let go. And and you think about um, how they there's no like sort of a, a planning for the future. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just live beyond where you are right in that moment and. When you're talking about that, that's how I describe people with frontal lobe injuries, and uh, that's a lot of what we deal with on a regular basis to try to, in, in some ways, sometimes we'd like the judgment for them. And um, so for kids, it's the same thing. I mean, when you're talking about this juvenile sentencing, um, they're impulsive, mm -hmm. they're, they're highly emotional, um, uh, some, some of their crimes, they're not things that aware are, are, are thought out, right. they're, not, not, they're not aware of the consequences right. and, and, and other things that, that go on. So as they mature, um, obviously because the connections in your brain um, grow and mature like the rest mature, of your Mature, yes. <laughs> um, and, and really it takes until somebody's, um, can be anywhere from 21 to 26. That's why I'll say you always see those uh, uh, insurance rates for your automotive insurance all of a sudden take a dive about the time you're 26. <laughs> oh, 26, that's right. Because you have, you have better right. judgment. Judgment becomes. It, and and yeah. you, you know, you're, you're able to follow through with things. And that's what the Supreme Court was really looking at when they made these um, rulings, was they were saying that, you know, these people have some of the best opportunities if we give them you know, the, the right um, uh, treatment and, and other things in order to become, be able to come back and be productive mm -hmm. citizens in the community. And, and that's, what they're, that's what the Supreme Court was, was ultimately looking at. It wasn't like saying, okay, we feel sorry because these kids are 17 yeah. and, yeah. Yeah. you right. know, that's, I mean, obviously yeah. that's not the way that they, they, they think. There's the emotions taken out of it. It's, it's really looking at the science of it. And that's really what we're trying to um, push forward, obviously, next session is, is getting people to focus right. on mm -hmm. the science of the situation and the ruling and um, finding a, a, a happy common ground. I know uh, the bill passed, I think, almost completely bipartisan through the House. It was a strongly bipartisan bill in the House. Yeah, That's absolutely, right. Absolutely. Yeah. House Bill 5221. I remember the number. Yeah. You got that yeah, one yeah. right on. It passed it in the, yeah, yeah. In the House, at least. Um, Fairly early on, Fairly early session on, in right, April. Right. Uh, we had a month to go, uh -huh. and um, obviously the hope was that that month was more than sufficient time uh, right. for consideration in the Senate. And uh, things um, it didn't go as, as smoothly in the Senate, oh, no, and, not which at was all. unfortunate yeah. because yeah. we're dealing. From my perspective, unfortunately, unfortunate because we're dealing with youths, um, mm -hmm. and in many cases. I mean, this starts, um, it can be as young as age 14. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's exactly. a right. difficult, um, yeah. it, it's difficult not to feel perhaps uh, compelled to, to really look, to, to cut through uh, mm -hmm. what ended up being um, sort of a sad ser series of events that really kind of hopelessly stalled it uh, in the Senate. Yeah, I know, and, 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 we, and we understood that, and I, I, I tried, because I was so involved with the ABI at the time, I kind of left uh, my job. Yeah, I had about a week. <laughs> I had about a week, right, and I tried to tell our folks that, yeah, look, let's do a clean thing, just let's go right. with the cause, you know, right. do it clean, go exactly where the uh, Supreme Court ruling is, then they're going to have to go with that, because they're not going to want to do anything that's against the Supreme right. Court. To go further than that, I said, we can argue that later. Yep. And of course, everybody was so sure that it was going to pass and everything else like that. They were not expecting mm -hmm. what, what happened mm -hmm. in the Senate. And, well, and uh, it got used and for it got different, different, different reasons devices. and different devices, yeah. exactly. And, and we're hoping this year that uh, reasonability and common ground can be reached so that we can at least get it through so it doesn't affect the legalities and the lawsuits that can come about and cost the state, uh, right. yeah, you, you know, for not complying right. much. Well, and the lawsuit know. opportunity um, is going to be a problem uh, yeah, yeah, across yeah, yeah, the yeah. states. I think it's, you can correct me if I, is it 11 states now have 
fully I, um, I, I believe, I passed, believe have, have fully passed and had signed into law the appropriate the, legislation. The appropriate to legislation. Conform with right. the Supreme Court. I, 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 23 you, looked at it, something like that? Oh, something like that. There was a huge amount that looked yeah. at it, and I think you're right on the 11. Uh, okay, I left off at about 9, and I was sure we were dealing with Massachusetts that uh -huh. was having trouble because obviously coming out of Massachusetts, I focused there because it affects individuals so I many know. individuals and, there uh, yeah, yeah. There, right. so many individuals right. there so I mean again real complications that this is another one of those but the potential is, the other part of the problem is that potentially at least in Connecticut it's I think in May 60 at least at least 60 known cases, cases already yeah. on appeal right. and I, I I could be wrong but the potential could be as high as 250 or more that's going to be a problem yeah. Because um, the litigation, it, litigation is expensive, yeah, but yeah. it's expensive um, both for the participants, it's it, expensive for the state, it's, it's expensive, expensive for, everybody. for everybody. Everybody is costly. Yeah. And without a clear single guideline to look at, uh, now there's the potential for results to sort of vary. Be very, yeah. And yeah, true. ultimately, yeah. should we then pass legislation in the next year, they're going to have to be adjusted again. Uh, well, it's a bit frustrating. Uh, it is frustrating. Very, it, it, I it, can't it, imagine if you're it, caught up in the system in this. It, it, well, it, it's got to be a mess because not only are you talking about, okay, we're going to review at a certain stage, what, other, what constitutes the things that could uh, demonstrate that you've changed, right. that you've developed. I mean, that's a whole quagmire, well, okay, a that, uh, that you, 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 exactly, yeah. and, and I don't, we're not prepared for it, and I don't think a lot of people are honest about that, that they're not really totally prepared well, I mean, this for is, that. This is a constant this, debate that we have, the way, obviously, I mean, uh, I'm some 25, 30 years in the disability community. Exactly. You know, and obviously, uh, with with both ends of the spectrum, with what you deal with, I mean, we often talk about where where is that point where somebody reaches that epiphany, mm -hmm. you know, that yeah. point where they they're ready to, to make that make change. The change, right? And it's a change that's followed through on, and and it's a difficult question because I mean, I probably dealt with some two to three thousand different people over the years I've worked in this business, and <laughs> I've dealt with that many <laughs> prisoners. With <laughs> Plus, right? I led that many prisoners. Yes. <laughs> And, and we go, we go back and forth, and, and, discuss. Yeah, and, 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 and it's hard. And how do you determine a change? And 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 we, well, we know from our perspective, education is is the yeah. one of the major keys to affect change in individuals. Okay, the problem we also know that the justice system and the prisons don't do a very good job. It's not a good place, it's for, education, a good place no. for education right. to, to work. It hasn't worked, they haven't spent the money, and of course they spend huge amounts of money for confinement the way it is. You put education on top of that, you're talking oh, yeah. uh, another 10 grand a well, year or better. Especially for young people. For young yeah. people, uh, uh, you know. Now, uh, as uh, we were talking about, my associate that's in Walpole, 46 years on a non-capital crime. He just went up before the board, his review. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's an author, uh, three books out, uh, painter, stuff like that, graduated Boston University, kumasum laude. Okay, has he changed? I mean, he went in at 17. Mm -hmm. Okay, and my question is, how do you, you, you know, he's sophisticated, educated mm -hmm. now, black guy, but he was a leader like I was in trying to unionize the prison early on mm -hmm. when he was a kid and everything else. So his early years was a very rebellious, struggling individual mm -hmm. in the environment. Well, that was then, you know, this is years and years later. So, you know, does the education show change or that he just got smarter and adapted? I mean, yeah. even me, how many people, many people still see me with all the stuff that I've done is I'm really conning everybody. I've really, <laughs> I, 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 I've really back I've in the day, so back, to speak. Back in the day, yeah, yeah. Like, I, like, like uh, uh, where does change come about? And, and those are the difficulties that yeah. you, of oh, course, yeah. uh, have to have to be looking at because you're the one, one of the ones that is going to be voting on what we do with these, uh, you, you know, this situation and. Uh, of course, I want you there because you have an open Thank ear you. and an open One, heart. An you know? Another problem um, that actually, when I started looking at this 
and start working to understand it better. Also, um, if you think about many of these youthful offenders at the time of the offense, years have passed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they're adults in adult prison. And we know that in adult prison, we do not do a good job taking care of the people that are, that are there, taking care of their mental health particularly Absolutely. something that for lots of us is an increasingly common discussion point, but we're just starting to understand the impacts of that. Mm -hmm. And even more so when you started there as a juvenile. Exactly. And that's another perhaps uh, area for discussion, maybe not at the moment that we go back to readdress this, but it's important because it's going to come in big time in the discussions when we start doing those evaluations, evaluations. when you start and looking at behavior and what, right. might, what, what, what might have changed, could have changed, exactly. should have changed, is going to be, I, I believe, greatly impacted by that as well. And those are issues that need to be confronted. Well, I think uh, one of the things we're also uh, looking at is obviously the big, the big issue that's been brought up uh, lately is about the, the, the risk reduction Mm -hmm. uh, uh, program uh, in, in the jails, which from a behavioral standpoint, and that's obviously where my, my thoughts obviously come around to, is you have to find a way to be able to give people an incentive in order to be able to, to find that opportunity for change. And so uh, from that end of the perspective, I, you know, I thoroughly believe that this uh, program, if it's implemented correctly, and obviously, I've just started delving into this. Um, is 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 important? It is. Exactly. You, you have to give people an incentive to change. To not, you know, within the within the jails itself, there's, several, there's so much you several can do. Reasons, okay. One is a control factor. Sure. If you don't give anybody any hope, you have the guards that are in a situation where you've got people with no hope in there that have nothing to lose that can be. Uh, destructive, self-destructive, mm -hmm. destructive towards everything. So somehow you need to allow for hope so that you have a control factor. That's a security reality. Sure. On the other hand, you want to do stuff that is good, that is productive to changing, and that they can't con their way on going where you earn, oh, I'm a smart guy, I'm intelligent, That's and, right. I, and yeah. I, I'm going to gain That's good right. time, but the reason I'm going to gain good time is to get out to That's do right. the same thing. Yep. And, right. and we, know that, we know that prisons, I know, prisons mm -hmm. are a training school on how to be bad. I mean, yeah. I had more guys want to learn how I became a gang leader and stuff like that, rather in prison when I was there rather than learn how to do history or, or anything else or read philosophy or anything mm -hmm. else. What their interest was, especially, you know, especially guys that had not even got high schools, uh, uh, you know, or low grades, you know, mm -hmm. fifth grade, sixth mm -hmm. grade, uh, uh, educational level, and you're trying to tell them, look, you need an education. You need to, you, you know, yeah, well, I want to be smart so I can become a loan shark. Well, no, that's... You know, you no. want to be smart so you can get a positive job uh, so that you can go to work for uh, Polaroid or, or something like that. I mean, so, and, and, and that's what you have to look at the reality of what you're talking about when you're dealing with prison. And yeah. I think fairly, in all fairness to many states, as they've looked at trying to change their particular rules around sentencing, um, for, and how they deal with particularly the juvenile population, but all of their incarcerated uh, population, those have been discussions that have been particularly important. And uh, that's where the balance is. It is the balance. Under Dan, under, under our, <laughs> our, our governor, we, we've done, we're doing pretty well. I mean, I have to always give him a, 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 a lot of stars for attempting to deal with this, attempting to do reduction of prison, attempting mm -hmm. to look at real good, positive program, especially with the juveniles. Mm -hmm. I, I, and, and we know that we, we we have a difficult state yeah. with, with, with the yeah. contrast yeah. of uh, the type of prisoners we have. We have different levels of prisoners. Some prisoners may need to be there 
forever. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and that's what most people don't want to, they don't want to say that. that. They don't want to think about that's that, right. but that's a reality. There are people that are never going to be out, shouldn't be out, and everything. I know Absolutely. that from being there. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and Bobby and I always will talk about stuff like that. There is a certain percentage, but that is not the majority. That, that should not affect those that have an opportunity to you know, do better mm -hmm. and, and be positive in our communities, you know, so. But I need you there <laughs> to hear. Those are hard questions. <laughs> we need to hear and from everybody. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's one thing that I think a lot of people maybe are um, reluctant to embrace, I guess, is the impact of the, uh, of the community when they come to discuss these issues. Sure. We talked earlier about the brain injury community mm -hmm. and the impact that that had. And I truly think that people's perceptions and understanding and thinking on issues around brain injury which was changed by that. And what did we spend, eight and a half hours or 10 oh, hours? Wow. It was a very long time. <laughs> it was a long time. Um, and and many, but, many days <laughs> after. <laughs> yeah. no, that's just right? in the, the, in in the, that, one, in the hearing. That's right. Exactly yeah. right. The hearings. But that right. can happen, and yeah. it does happen. And right. when it happens, I think it, it's um, particularly worth remembering the mm -hmm. next time around right because um because the community came and because the discussion was um not just robust we say that all the time but also very personal oh, yeah yeah and yeah. difficult yeah. but heartfelt I, I think that that it really does have an impact and well, lots of people in outside the the sort of the the the, the world sort of really slam uh, the public sector and, and, and the political process and without maybe also paying attention to those moments when that can happen. Well, I know this was, this was really uh, my first foray. I know Father's been around uh, doing this for quite a long period of time. <laughs> but it was, it was get first, a, when uh, I get somebody yeah. like him, I don't, I don't let him go. And uh, you, you know, uh, and and Dominic has done so, uh, so well. And his understanding, okay, uh, obviously coming out of the disability community, long time dealing with disability and brain, mm -hmm. his his help in the in the justice stuff that I've yeah. dealt with for 50 some odd years was was a good transition because he has that understanding of people and personalities that you don't I, 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 that most people don't understand how closely related that those those uh, both fields are because mm -hmm. what you have as you said in the prison community is a huge amount of disabled individuals oh, yeah. that are learning disabilities, uh, mental challenges, and stuff like that, and that's what they're there. They're in there. Brain, brain injury. And, and I know brain I, injury. I, years ago, and, and I actually not went into, uh, that, you into know. the jail system uh, when I worked for uh, Brain Injury Alliance or Brain Injury Association. Mm -hmm. was. And uh, I actually met up with uh, one of the doctors. Unfortunately, he retired from there uh, recently, but kind of helping them understand how to be able to, to deal with some of the issues of somebody being brain injured in, in, in the jail system and, and what problems that kind of presents because uh, they were, you know, kind of, they didn't understand how to deal with certain people and um, to be able to explain to them and, uh, how this interacts or affects their behaviors and how they see the world and everything else, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was helpful for them. but. It kind of, it, it, again, it brought around awareness and to realize how many people, you know, suffer a brain injury in, in, in these institutions mm -hmm. because of where they are and mm -hmm. uh, around the people that they are, they're around and, um, yeah. Well, it, physical violence, a brain injury yes. is yes. so common yeah. uh, as an outcome that um, I, I, not everybody always understands that until mm -hmm. they fall and hit their head. Yes. It's um, you know my mom fell and hit her head um, in the last uh, say it was in the last six or seven months of her life and you know it was a it was a difficult thing mm -hmm. for myself for me and my sister particularly as her caretakers to understand all of the aspects of that healing process well, and what happened and yeah. first what happened You're right but then the speed or what we viewed as lack thereof 
of speed and the recovery process and what the brain does um, as it tries to recover uh -huh. um, is it was fascinating but frustrating and to us I mean this was a, a whole new you know whole new world and um, hard to understand so in institutional life particularly there's not a lot of room for that kind of of time for understanding exactly right uh, and and uh, again, the people that we work with, it's, it is so amazing. Uh, you, you know, I mean, I, I work with someone who understands they've been brain injured at a certain level, however, understands they're at a certain age now and mm -hmm. the confusion between I'm mm -hmm. um, this age, but I, oh, don't, yeah. I don't think like, you, you know, what you're telling me is not the way I'm viewing my myself. And, it, and it, it's really an interesting thing to, there's glimpses of, you know, gee whiz, I know I'm X amount of age, but that's not what my brain's telling me. My brain's mm -hmm. telling me um, at, a, at a different age, I, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 uh, and, and those are the things that we go through all the time with the development and stuff like that. But uh, Something that everybody took for granted until that injury until occurred. Until that happened, yeah. yeah and that's until you, that moment. Until that moment, okay, and probably what you saw in Mother was, okay, I got injured here. Well, now I'm something's wrong something's, oh yeah 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 my something i'm not i'm not up they, to where they, i am they, they have a they word stop it's, a, it's actually they called really, ghosting okay yes. there you it's, go. it's 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 where the person the remembers who they were before their actual like injury Ooh. and 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 they 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 want to continue on from that, where from they that were point. right right exactly yeah. right. and it, it changes the way that you have to like understand like uh who somebody is as a person I mean, I worked, I worked with somebody years ago. She was uh, a PhD. She was um, working on Parkinson's disease. And uh, she was a research scientist. And uh, unfortunately, she got hit by a car, had a closed head injury. And she could no longer uh, participate in that. But it didn't mean that she took away from her the fact that she was a PhD scientist. And, you know, we'd have some of the younger people go in and try to work with her and she would just like torment them <laughs> because they didn't understand that this is how she remembered herself and this is how she wanted to be treated. Mm -hmm. And even though she had this injury, that's, that's where her mindset was and you, you had yeah, to be able to take I'm that doctor. into an account. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm the doctor, right. Yeah. And that's, that's the way that she viewed herself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or she used to tell me she she went down from a 150 IQ to like a 120. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Those <laughs> measures probably aren't yes. even. Yes, no, no, no. They're, 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 they're not. Like that's that. just but how yeah. she. Uh, that's how she communicated. Yeah, uh -huh. right. yeah. I yeah. see. I yeah. see. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. that is that is interesting. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, it was fascinating in some respects. Um, emotionally difficult, obviously, for us personally because of the closeness. But it was fascinating. I, I do want to. I do want to ask you before I get to the show gets over with. Locally, how how do you feel? Where where are we locally? How, uh, okay, I mean obviously I, I have you here. You're New London. You represent. Yep. You know you're 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 going to be my senator. <laughs> well, now you're very presumptuous. I I, I, I am. <laughs> uh, but it's a part of your nature. Uh, it's right? yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, what do you, what do you see as locally? What's happening here? Um, well, obviously, I'm running for the Senate seat. Right, right. Currently, I'm the state representative from Waterford and part of the town of Montville, okay. about a quarter of the town of Montville. Mm -hmm. And I live in the Quaker Hill section of Waterford, so I'm up sort of towards the, towards the Montville line, so it's always been very convenient for me. I obviously have always known a lot of folks there. The Senate district is larger, uh, eight towns, mm -hmm. and um, all of New London, Waterford, East Lyme, Old Lyme, and Salem, uh, and Basra, and a poor, almost all of the town of Montville, and a small portion, well, 40% of the town of Old Saybrook. So it crosses the Connecticut River. Oh, Not wow. everyone realizes oh, that. Oh, no, 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 that's, uh, okay. <laughs> that's across right. the river. Okay, yep. okay. And um, so it's larger, mm -hmm. and uh, Senate districts have a little less than about 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Connecticut, uh, in each of them. And uh, so that's uh, obviously more than four times the size of uh, currently. So I'm campaigning, I'm spending a lot of time doing that. 
and uh, meeting people most particularly around the six towns that I've not represented because I've got a, a you know, I've worked for 10 years as the state representative for oh, yeah, and my field. So I'm spending a lot of time in those other towns. And um, New London was uh, perhaps a lot easier for me because I've always done work in New London. And um, yeah, that's we know. closer we're to home. Closer so to home. Much closer okay, to home. Yeah, yeah. Right. They count you as being home right up the street. <laughs> well, well, we, 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 we just yeah, saw yeah, you yeah. on TV uh, or, or uh, an event that you were talking about yep. uh, what was the rail. Yes. Oh, the rail. Oh, the yeah. rail what a wonderful is that hat. Yeah. For Except, New oh, London? Uh, yeah. The terminal point. Yes. And that, with the water, with yes. the waterway stuff? Yes. Lots of people don't understand what that's, you, you know, I can't believe they don't understand. Transportation, right. the rail, and well, the, the bridge. Potential. Yes. And the, the bridge money is coming. The, um, did you ride the water taxi? Either not not right yet. I, I have. I, I have. I actually vacationed up not, there in no, August. No, I didn't get a no, chance. No, Jennifer though. went out on the water Did thing she? with the governor. Yeah, Jennifer. Yep. One of our people went yep. out with the. I hadn't walked. When the governor when came and rode the water yeah, taxi. Yeah, when he rode yep. the taxi. She yep. was. She was on the. Yeah, I wasn't was on, on there I, with I, the I governor. Yeah, yeah. I, I went on my own. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But, but um, you. Well, you might remember that. Oh gosh, more than maybe 10 years ago was the last time the water taxi, I'm a little uncertain about that time there, was seriously discussed um, mm -hmm. here in New London. When I first came here, they were talking yeah. about that. About right? trying to. And, and I talked to it, uh, Andy Maynard about that so yeah. much. Over. Oh. Andy, Andy loved that whole Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. You know, well, know, he's really he, the one responsible for getting this off the, got, uh, off the mark off this time. Off the mark for this, okay? Yes. His work on that was. Absolutely fabulous and, and tremendous. I, a lot of people may not know how much he did. A lot of us the, have been sending our pictures back and forth with him. I do. Of us on a lot of water taps. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> and, that, and that's, that's great. It, that's because um, that really has been a big hit and has the, uh, the real potential of connections across the river, but among the organizations on either side of the river and upriver. Ultimately, I mean, we could we could go up to the Nautilus, uh, exactly. the colleges, uh, the colleges. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, which is it's just outstanding, and multiple sites um, in the city of Groton. Yeah, absolutely, very exciting. Economically, a lot of people don't understand how. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I've lived in Michigan area where they did riverside stuff and the boats uh -huh. and everything else with restaurants and and stuff like that, and so a lot of people don't know that stuff unless you're in the boating community of course as you know yeah uh, okay but but uh, what I, a, go, what I go down i take mine down in new york city and that's why water taxis we stay right. in liberty liberty landing over in new oh, jersey there you go yeah. and you gotta you gotta you go right across to manhattan you, oh, you, you, yeah, you go down fabulous, to statue of liberty fabulous. and what an example what a great, actually yeah, that gives us that, of the benefits that that have followed the right. water taxi what is the yeah. taxi great the right. development there it's really, it's, it's amazing. really been a spark. I know, it. And I know. It. I'm, I'm hopeful, so excited. Hopeful that we're able. You know that it was for the two weekends as a pilot, free. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, now they they took. I don't know. Well, they took surveys. Um, I was surveyed, and are uh, looking at all of the comments. You can go online um, through the uh, uh, website yeah. for the Avery yeah. Cop Museum and evaluate the water taxi and they are looking at all the information that they put together because it, it, I think there really is excitement. I think we could do oh, this. It's, uh, and uh, now yeah, it's, we're looking at, of course, ways to establish a more permanent funding stream of some kind to keep it going. I, and it would be huge for us. I, I, I love the, the Wait whole, till the Coast Guard Museum. I was just yeah. going to say the museum. I'm so yeah. happy with Admiral Papp and, 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 and what they're doing and the families. Obviously, I'm a Coast Guard family member. I have seven in the, I have seven in the Coast Guard, my daughter, my youngest. Seven. Seven, seven oh. family members, Coast Guard. Uh, two officers, graduates of the Coast Guard. My daughter, actually three. My daughter's the third. Mm -hmm. my, youngest, mm -hmm. well, my youngest daughter is uh, 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 Coast Guard, Lieutenant in the Coast Guard, just come back from Syria. Okay, and she's with the Atlantic Strike Force, a Angie. And uh, so we're really pleased with that. And then, of course, we, you know, we got a lot of military family oh, type yes. of thing. I got Navy. Navy and all that stuff. So it's a big, it's a big deal from, from where I sit, and I know what the potential can be. And I don't really, I'm, you know, a lot of people. I, the museum could be a lifesaver. And then when you talk about the water, 
uh, yeah. way coming in and what yeah. they plan to do with the water. It, it is. You, and, you the know, oper and the freight the opportunities freight oper that, well, the, that's that the, the other, train line The train bring. line, exactly. I, I mean, and that's co of course due to the Panama Canal expansion and everything else like that. The freight opportunities work uh, can, overnight. It was interesting in that discussion about the um, freight line mm -hmm. um, with the Vermont Central people to hear from businesses who have immediate access now to the line and understand the expansion opportunities up eastern Connecticut. Up, up, right. You know, here we think we know what we have here, but some of these, um, it, it really was very interesting to hear that. And if you combine that with the potential around the development sure. of the port, uh, for shipping opportunities right. because um, New London is Connecticut's deep water port. It's a deep water port. And that yeah. is, and the, any, any dredging that happens here is taken care of for us by the federal government for, for the submarine base. Exactly. That's an opportunity that's begging. Oh, yeah. uh, exactly. It really is. Exactly. And so well, it, it, brings, it brings about the point of, you know, what a senator. <laughs> who knows the area? Exactly. Can, Why we can, need you? Can, can, can do, can can do, do to, to be able to bring. Right. I mean, uh, certainly, you know, the governor's done a, a, a lot mm -hmm. within this, um, but it needs the attention. The governor, the governor it understands needs to, that. It needs, to, right. it, it needs to be brought to his attention, to, and to have, you know, a, a, obviously Andy in that capacity with the ports and everything else. Well, this, but how important this, it is to have a strategic river view. heritage yeah. corridor. Um, corridor, is, right? I mean, that's the, why you want a the senator. The big deal for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big that that understands what that is, and of course you understand the environmental. I know, <laughs> I know all this stuff. <laughs> you this understand. is going to be the next show because you know we hear most. <laughs> The other stuff, right? <laughs> we can get so they want more for it. Yeah, exactly. exactly right. But that's why that that's that's why I want. I obviously I want my voters to know why I want you in that slot because mm -hmm. of the understanding you have of the area, the port, what's going on, and that we need that representation in your history. It's not like, you know, you, you know it's not like you're new to there. You're a representative, so you, you know what's been going on. You know the contacts and everything else that have to be pushed forward. And, and you know, Joe, I, I believe that Joe's not going to have any difficulty. I'm not worried about oh, Courtney. Joe's, but, Joe's I, work for that freight his, line, let me tell you, done unbelievable. it was relentless. I, I know it, I know it. And yeah. I, truly relentless. Yeah, I know. And that's been something that, um, I mean, that'll be something permanent here for, for uh, minimally for decades and decades that will bear um, really his, his stamp. Uh, and, and, really and, and, that's, and, and, and that's why I'm a down and dirty Democrat. I mean, I have to say, I, I, I make no apologies to the Republican Party. And I tried to explain here in New London, I'm what, I'm 12 years in New London, but do you look at the core group of the people that we have representing us mm -hmm. in the Democratic Party, yes, yourself, Tim Bowles, Andy, uh, Joe, and stuff like that that worked in a governor that truly the first governor that I understand even really looked to our area. He's been down and here so he much. He has been down here so much. He has. Okay, you did not see that before from other people. And, and, and our people need to know that, and that's why they need to put him back in there, and they need to put you back in there as senator. I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's there is no emotion in that. I mean, it's real academic understanding of politics and the reason why uh, from my perspective that you need the kind of leadership that we have and that's why our people need to get out and vote all our union members need you need to get out and ensure that we keep this economic train going and uh, so you know, i'm going to add something go about ahead. the need to get out and vote because we all have as our example we have a landslide mm -hmm. joe courtney and not very many of us um, have forgotten he won by 83 votes, and just about all of us know mm -hmm. 83 people really well. That was the difference um, for right. Joe. That's exactly and right. If, as I say to people all the time, if you don't get out and vote, you lose your right to complain, and nobody mm -hmm. wants to lose their right to complain. But um, that 83 vote margin, that uh, was pretty impressive. Um, smallest or 
Yes, smallest Sm margin. Smallest I think Joe will tell you. Right, right. Um, in decades, at least, and uh, he's the man keeping the statistics and for I, us. And I want you to talk to our people and tell them, uh, why, you know, why you want to be senator. In about four minutes, and, and I hope you. I'm going to have you back. Well, thank okay. you very much. But, You've been very kind to me tonight. Yeah. Uh, and this has been an opportunity for um, me to have a few minutes on the show, and I've really appreciated it. Some of the issues that we've talked about tonight are issues that um, are important to me, um, I feel passionately about, and it's really been an honor for me to be able to work on them directly over the last 10 years as I've represented the towns of Waterford and Montville. I, I would very much like to, to have the opportunity to represent the Senate District to continue to do that work. Southeastern Connecticut, in my opinion, is the best part of Connecticut, as I always say, to live, work, and raise a family. We have to work hard in southeastern Connecticut, work hard to grow jobs. We have to work hard to keep our economy uh, to, uh, for ourselves here, for our children and for our families. And I would be absolutely um, privileged and honored to be part of that work. I've got some good ideas about moving us forward, about changing a few things in the way we do business in Connecticut that can help particularly our small businesses um, help our businesses understand that we are here for them to support them, not merely to regulate uh, and, to and to tax them, but to understand the benefits of having them here. Those are important things to me, and I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. I loved having you on, Betsy. Why, thank and you. I love working with you yes. and thank stuff you. like that. And hey, partner, very, very good. Uh, Next week, uh, guess what? <laughs> ne next week we have uh, uh, Paul uh, Formica on. Him. Uh, Paul's going Paul's to come on. He's, mm -hmm. he's supposed to be our guest next week. So we're going to hear from the, the other side of, uh, of, of the issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to thank all my viewers and everybody for tuning in. And uh, we want to say uh, bless you to all the people and our friends out there. Make sure you get involved, make sure you vote, and uh, I guess, Joe, you can run the street. God bless you all. I'll see you next week. Uh-huh. There we go. We're out of here.